Welcome back to the channel, everyone. And in today's video, I did a little kind of a social experiment. I had I had a couple and went through a process of multiple interviews in some different sectors, tech industry, utilities, power, financial. And currently, uh, there has been a change. And I'm going to give you my experience, what I went through uh, during these interviews and what they are currently looking for. What was a bit different, but currently what they all had in common. Um, and this also has some something to do with the economic change that we have been seeing, especially in cybersecurity. So that being said, let's jump right into this video. So first thing is, what do I mean by the differences between 2022? Um, and then what middle third quarter of 2023, where we saw the big dip and decline, all the layoffs happening while during COVID, there was a lot of printing funding money, meaning they were hiring over hiring people that they didn't even need people that were underqualified were getting jobs left and right. Um, especially in the cybersecurity industry. What do I mean by that? Um, there were talented people that got in that didn't have no certs. Um, I'm not a fan of it, but didn't even have degrees, no experience at all, but they knew their job. However, that was very, very small, rare, variable to the rule. The majority of people didn't. It was about um, that term that I'm not a fan of. It's all about who you know, not what you know, which to a degree, I'm for that. But if you don't know shit, I don't care if you know me, I'm not referring you for a job. You better know um, your shit blindfolded. Uh, that's what I mean by I'm not a fan of that. So people were getting hired just because of who they knew. They didn't know shit about the job or the role. They didn't know how to do it. They're pretty much trying to um, get their way in to do, uh, you know, learn as they go kind of thing. So the main point of this video is, uh, and I'm only speaking for offensive security. I'm not speaking for any other sectors of cyber. Um, offensive security, meaning pen testing and red teaming. Um, and for those that know, I posted one of the questions for one of the companies I did interview, which was AT&T and InfoSec Pat's Discord channel under the general chat. And that gives you an idea of what they're currently looking for. And that pretty much was aligned, not just for any kind of red team role that I did interview for, but it was also, it was also the same kind of questionnaire minus, uh, they did go over kind of more of a high level of C2 Cobalt Strike, but it wasn't that much in depth. However, everything else was pretty much in line uh, with what they were asking. So pretty much now, um, you know, back then it was the uh, make it or break it end all be all was the OSCP. Um, and I'm back then was at least when I got in, I didn't even have any certifications at all for offensive security, uh, you know, in my current role in 2022. Um, so yeah, you can get the job without any certs. It's possible. I didn't get my OSCP till 20, uh, June of 2024. Um, so back then it was just OSCP, the end all be all free flooding, right? Currently now, if, if you go on LinkedIn, you see some of these openings. Yeah, it's going to have OSCP, um, but they're looking for preferred and pretty much you have to get your game up. And I'm glad I sent my roadmap to after DEF CON OSWE and OSEP, um, because now those are the two that I'm seeing and the companies that I did or the, the companies and the roles that I did apply to, to interview for. Those are what were preferred was OSEP, CRTO2, OSWE, or the, um, I think it's CWEE, the um, uh, expert advanced level from Hack the Box on web. They were looking for that. Th those also good detail, good experience and knowledge, especially the questions on C2, mainly Cobalt Strike. They did ask some of Sliver, Havoc, uh, was it Root, Root, but, but Root, uh, Rat, whatever. I've only met, messed with that a little bit. Uh, we found it um, on one of the illegal sites to download uh, back when I first started in 2022, just to mess around. Root Patel, I think that's what it's called. Um, uh, Mythic and a Covenant, uh, but they pretty much dial in an in-depth questions on pretty much how do you do this? How do you create this? How do you maneuver this um, for C2? So you got to have a good knowledge base of C2s and have a good understanding on all the different processes, tools, um, payloads, et cetera. Uh, 
But the main thing too, as well, like out, even outside of the C2, your main foundation now that I've noticed has to be external, internal, AD, web, and API. Those four components, um, that has to be your foundation now um, in order to move forward. There's, it start. I don't want to say offensive security is getting saturated, but it's getting saturated, especially if everyone's getting the OSCP now. So you have to level up. A lot of people, I, I feel that from what I've seen, have gotten comfortable. Um, I'm not saying they got to go out and be on the computer like me 24-7. But if you're not out there learning, pushing yourself, learning new things, this is what's going to happen. You're going to get left behind. This is why I always talk in my videos. You got to be ahead of the trends and the curves. So um, just because I'm interviewing doesn't mean I'm going to look for a job. And I sure hell ain't going to work in the office, um, especially five days a week. Um, that's a no-go. However, I do this so I can see what companies are looking looking for, what uh, different um, tool sets, requirements, experience, knowledges they're requiring. Um, seeing you know uh, where their where their heads are at outside of because if you just look at yours and you don't do that, you're you're going to be left behind as well because you never know shit happens. Someone makes a wrong decision. There's a a leak or a hack. Um, a breach and that could also be your walking papers and you're left behind because you got stagnant and didn't learn anything outside of your current role or job or business forever if that mat you know if that's your your uh, the current road you're on you have to be able to branch out and i I'll, i talk about it i don't do it as much but i do mess around on the side um and i only really do it if asked or to help out or if there's an incident um as a threat hunter i still mess around with crowdstrike i'm trying to get this down certification if we can forget to figure out the credits however uh, for falcon i'm going on my own dime and i'm probably going to pay for the two classes which i just saw right now one's on monday and thursday and in between the conference so if i don't get any you know hearing on that i am going to pay for those on my own dime because i want that certification um and what i mean by that is being a double-edged sword so not only an understanding of pen testing red teaming but also have the understanding on how the blue team works because that's going to add value to your resume if you work at an organization and you're not taking advantage of, of, I'm not even talking about certs. I'm just saying taking advantage of having to learn Splunk, Darktrace, even though I'm not a fan of Darktrace, um, CrowdStrike, Sentinel One, Exonius, um, Anomaly, Zero Fox, et cetera. If you have access and you're giving uh, credentials to go in, a uh, silo breaker, shit like that, uh, Mandiant. If you're getting access to these tools and you're not utilizing them, learning them, and adding those skill sets to your resume, something is, is wrong with you. And I'm just going to say it like that. You should be adding these skill sets and learning, asking if, if their training is available, go for the training, go for that certification. Definitely. Um, but at least get that experience because if you add that to your resume, that's going to bring value uh, then someone that just has an OSCP, you have your OSCP, you're in process and, or you got your OSEP, OSWE, you know, the blue team side, you know, the threat hunting side. So not only do you know that and have that skill set, but that's also going to make you a better red teamer and vice versa. If you get pulled on an incident, similar to like what I am going in as an offensive security person, you're going to understand uh, on how certain threat actors or different tools work and help out your team that way. So it's a double-edged sword. So pretty much what you got to do right now from, from what I've seen, and, and those are six companies that I, I interviewed for, you have to have external, internal, I'm just going to throw AD in there, web and API, obviously external and internal. That has to be your bread and butter now. There's no questions asked. You can't have one or the other. You can't, oh, I'm just web. I, I can learn AD and vice versa. That's not going to fly anymore. Um, now you have to go the extra step, learn C2, at least learn the basics of it, uh, have a good understanding of how it works, play with it. I mean, a lot of them are free on Kali Linux. Secondly, uh, is going to be the blue team side, have some basic under, uh, understanding, incident response, threat hunting, um, forensic, uh, investigations, uh, threat analyst, or, um, you know, threat intelligence, have something like that added that's going to add value not just for you but also the organization that's going to pick you up there's a, a double parallel aspect that was asked on these interviews and even as a pen tester which was surprising um do you know how to code and or do you do malware development do you create your own 
malware or payloads, et cetera. They kind of said it both different companies said it those two ways. There's a lot of people, um, and I was one myself, which you, I mean, you technically don't, but it's, a, it's right now, it's going to be a lot harder for you to get in. If they're interviewing, I mean, go on LinkedIn, you see all these um, offensive security pen testing red teaming within an hour, they already have over a hundred applications or applicants, right? You don't even know the total number. It just says over a hundred. So and I think it stops updating over a hundred. Um, so if you don't know how to code, if you're one out of 99 and you don't have some kind of extra added value, that's like that, but everyone else and their mama that's applied knows how to code and or do malware development, you're going to be asked out. So when people saying you don't need a code yeah but i could probably win the lottery and have a better chance right now um, because there are so many people especially the younger generation that are into coding right now that have that as a background that have been brought up to code so and i'm currently learning that myself on both malware development and coding so if you don't have that i'm going to say right now I would not take anyone's word that says you could get in without coding. I would say you need coding right now to get into cyber from an offensive security standpoint. I can't speak on others because uh, I'm not, that's not fully my role, but that's what I would say. Um, you know, from my experience interviewing and in, in, there's a six or seven different companies. Again, I put that if, if you go to InfoSec, InfoSec Pat's discord general chat, I loaded those up there. And those pretty much, like I said, were universal around the board for who I interviewed, minus the C2, uh, if it wasn't a red team uh, role, a pen tester. They did ask, but it wasn't as granular, uh, you know, down to the T. And um, the web app, the web app portion of the, uh, you know, the interviews, the technicals are really real. It's not just like your CBBH, which I have. It's, I mean, there's shit that I had no idea what they were talking about. So... And again, I stated in my videos that after DEF CON, web, web is my main part, web and API are my main priority. I got to get up to at least an expert level by December. Um, and that's a personal goal for mine. That has nothing to do with my job. And then also in, in tandem, I am going to be doing the OSCP. So that's my main priority. If, if that means if I don't get any of these other certs by then, so be it. I'll eat that as a loss. But these two right now are going to be my main Goal and bread and butter. Yeah, my phone, my watch keeps going off. But so um, that being said, that is my experience doing these interviews. And what you, at least what I would recommend you change uh, if you're in offensive security is to build up your foundation. And again, um, I'm not telling people to be like me, to be at the computer 24 seven, but um, unfortunately that's just the way cyber is. It's not all this glitz and glam working on the beach type thing, um, working wherever you want, um, you actually have to put in work. Uh, it's not easy. And there's times where I just wanted to say, fuck it. Um, you know, it, it's hard. And then when you got the added stuff with having kids, family, having stuff in other states, um, relationships that don't work out and all, you know, back and forth, it's not easy. It's hard. Um, especially when you're, you're older and especially when you're taking more of a risk transitioning from a different career field like finance, facilities, physical security, legal, going into cyber, that adds even more of a stress because it's a risk, especially if you don't have the proper planning in place. So just be prepared. And again, that's my experience on, and this was just recently. So uh, I would say, Again, external, internal, AD as one block, external, internal, web, and API as another. That has to be your bread and butter foundation going forward. You can't have one or the other. You can't have AD, all learn web, or you have to have, that has to be your foundation right now. Um, and then after that, if you want to go to the red team aspect, you got to have C2. You have to have programming and or malware development. They, I don't know, that's just how they're explained in the interviews, um, malware development coding, um, and then also whatever extracurricular skills you have as far as the blue team, learning these different tools, knowing how they function, and even if you can get those certifications. So that's the video today. Um, you know, that's the honest experience that I went through for these interviews, what I learned, how that, sh that change is going up. And then also 
you got to have the, the latest and greatest relevant certs, which now are OSEP and OSWE to start and the hack the box um, um, advance. That's the new preferred. It's not preferred is not OSEP anymore. Those three are now the, the preferred and CRTO2. So that's the video. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think. If you agree, disagree in the comments. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.